There's no cheat sheet for a line. Sometimes people who pride themselves on being the most honest end up betraying themselves as they lie. The history of lying. Hello class. <laughs> Welcome to the next installment in the history of lying. Looking at the Google Classroom, it seems that the majority of you truly attempted to be honest in your last homework assignment. Did you forget what class you were in? I bet a lot of you are wondering, how do you know I was telling the truth? You don't know me. <laughs> in this week's lecture, I'll be letting you in on my trade secrets, how we detect lying in others. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I mean, this is why you sign up for this class, isn't it? To get some magic bullet, to become some mentalist or Sherlock Holmes or something. I'm sorry to say it's not going to be quite so straightforward. There's no one-size-fits-all guide to sniffing out lies. But I'll let you in on a secret that Moynihan probably wouldn't like me to air. Even deception experts like Moynihan are only right like 60% of the time. I mean, that's not much better than a coin toss. The other thing to remember, and this is very important, is that you won't get to the truth by looking for lies. I know, counterintuitive. Look, there's no cheat sheet for lying, okay? Just because somebody doesn't tap their nose or, or look to their left or look up or whatever does not mean that they're lying and vice versa. Dr. Paul Ekman was one of the first psychologists to study how deception affects human behavior. He was the one who coined the term micro-expressions to describe the tiny fissures that appear in someone's expression when they're trying to keep strong emotions under control. Even Dr. Ekman noted that just because you see a change in someone's expression, it doesn't mean that you know why it occurred. The complexities of having a conversation and really understanding someone else are difficult enough without probing for falsehoods. On the other hand, you probably already intuitively know when something's off about someone. We're empathy machines, after all. Two combined studies on human communication show that 55% of all communication is nonverbal. We're trained from an early age to read facial cues and body language. I mean, you've probably guessed correctly when somebody else was lying to you before, right? And you've also probably given them the benefit of the doubt, right? Because for most people, calling someone a liar is a grave accusation. I mean, they don't want to believe it. Or you might just be inclined to like them. Nobody likes to talk about biases, but we all have them. Right. We're inclined to favor certain people and points of view, usually thanks to our social, cultural, and economic upbringings. It's not fair, but we have to acknowledge it, otherwise we may not notice that we've let a lie slip by. Now, setting all that aside, it is true that lies are more difficult for the brain to process. I mean, there's a reason why we appear distressed and, and anxious when we're lying. It's because we are, unless we've practice quite a bit. So, how do these anxieties show themselves? I'm going to demonstrate some of the tics that have been cataloged by Dr. Ekman, as well as some law enforcement officers. And some of these have already been demonstrated by members of the Liars Club. When some liars are particularly uncomfortable, there will be definite anchor point movements. The rest of the world just calls it jumpiness, but we behavioralists look particularly at parts of the body anchoring a liar in space. Anchor points are usually in the feet and arms. Men especially tend to try to take up space, assuming a dominant stance. As a liar loses his cool, he blows off nervous energy by shifting around. Another telltale sign is hiding one's eyes or mouth. I mean, you might have seen someone recently do this. <laughs> People who cover their eyes when lying tend to be hiding the reactions of others from themselves. They're already ashamed. Other tells are harder to pick up on. Sometimes they're in the little details, like how people gulp or 
swallow when they lie. Like there's something stuck in their throat. The truth, maybe? Sometimes the people who pride themselves on being the most honest end up betraying themselves as they lie. When they nod while saying no, or vice versa, they exhibit verbal, nonverbal disconnect, driven into conflict with themselves. Then there are the grooming gestures, which you've probably done yourself when you're nervous, you know? Before you ask, what about avoiding eye contact? Isn't that a classic liar's tale? It's not that simple. When someone is always uncomfortable with eye contact, it's less a sign of deception as a severe social anxiety. I mean, this is true with all tics. It's most important to understand a person's baseline behavior. Baseline behavior is established by noting how someone acts and reacts in normal conversations or conversations where they feel at ease. And if somebody's always fidgeting with their hair or rubbing their forehead or rocking back and forth, that, well, they're just fidgety by nature. Okay, maybe they need those ticks to remain calm. It's when the fidgeting is unusual that you should pay attention to what they're saying and why they may be uncomfortable. So, my lie detectors, why don't you go back and test your new chops on other videos by the Liars Club? Which of these ticks is exhibited by which of these liars? Hmm? I mean, there's clearly enough material to go around and I'm interested to see what you find out on your own. Not to tarnish my own image, but you know what I said about experts, only getting things right 60% of the time. I've been trying to use these cues to catch the arsonist and it's not particularly clear. I love your opinions. It'll also be interesting to see what the club does with the newest curveball we throw at them. <laughs> I mean, they can barely follow basic ethical tenets, and now Moynihan wants to see if they can keep a secret. <laughs> I'm giving them an hour tops before they break the rules. For your homework this week, create a compilation of field notes in Google Classroom. This will be a short written assignment, noting moments when you think the Liars Club lied. Remember, you must provide evidence. An accusation without proof is as bad as a lie. And if you follow the rules, I'll get you some exclusive insider information. How's that sound? I'll be watching closely.